Number one asks us to find a sequence of rigid motions and dilations that will take square A, B, C, D to square E, F, G, H. Um, so you kind of have a few different ways that you can do this. So there isn't just one correct answer. Um, but certainly we are going to um, have to do a dilation since ABCD is larger than EFGH. And since we have um, the side lengths given here, I'm going to start with a dilation. So I'm going to just say dilate um, square ABCD. Um, and you can do kind of whatever point you want here. I'm just going to um, dilate it in place. I'm just going to say dilate square ABCD um, with A as the center and a scale factor of. And now remember when you do scale factor, you need to use the new length divided by the original. So in this case, by a scale factor of two fifths. So then that's going to get my square to be the same size as the other one. Now I'm going to have to start bringing it over um, and getting it to touching the other square. So let's see. Let me see if I can put this on here. So currently what I've done is just um, scaled it down so that it's the same size. So now I'm going to get them touching by doing a translation. So I'm going to translate um, square A, B, C, D by directed line segment, and I'm going to take A to E. So by directed line segment A, E, which will get us here. Um, and then I'm going to need to rotate to get it on top of the other one. So we'll do rotate um, A, B, C, D um, around point E, since that's what it's touching. Um, until, and now this point right here was D. So I'm going to rotate until D goes all the way over to H. So until point D coincides with point H or until D lands on, you could also change this to say lands on point H. So either way, whichever one you like better, but then that's going to, um, kind of bring it all the way like this, and then they would be um, exactly on top of each other. Number two, quadrilateral P, um, Q and P are similar. What's the scale factor that would take P to Q? Okay, so saying that P is the original. So in this one, P is the original and you're going um, to Q. So remember that you need to take a the new length divided by an original length. So that's going to give us the scale factor taking P to Q. And then if we wanted to do the scale factor that would take Q to P to go backwards, um, now our new length would be 4 and our original length would be 5. Number three, what is our definition of similarity? So A just says two figures that have the same angles, then they're going to be similar. That's not true. If two figures have proportional side lengths, then they're similar. That's not true. If there's a sequence of rigid transformations that takes one figure to another, then they're similar. If it's just rigid transformations, then they're going to be congruent. So this one's not true. So for D, now they add in rigid transformations and dilation. So the dilations is what makes them similar versus just congruent. So D would be the correct answer. Number four, triangle DEF is formed by connecting the midpoints of the sides of the triangle that would mean that the lengths of, um, or sorry, then the lengths of DEF are shown. What is the length of BC? So now we're trying to figure out the length of this side. And so that one's going to be two times bigger than DF. 
And so DF is four, so BC is eight. Number five, if AB is 12, okay, so we've got um, this segment right here is 12. then what is the length of a prime b prime so we're trying to figure out this one so we need the scale factor to help us with this one um, and sometimes this scale factor um, can be kind of confusing so let's take a look at um, the triangles being formed here so we've got this top triangle here and um so that new length for BC, if we're looking at it, is 6. And the original length for BC, okay, was this whole length here of 9. So when we're trying to come up with the scale factor, remember we do the new length, and the new length B prime, C prime, is 6, and the original length um, was 9. So the scale factor in this case simplifies down to two-thirds. And so then if we're trying to figure out this one, um, going from AB to A prime, B prime, then we would take 12 times the scale factor of two-thirds. And so that would give us 24 over 3 or 8 for the length of A prime, B prime. Number 6 says that um, right angle ABC is taken by a dilation with a center of P and a scale factor of one half to angle A prime, B prime, C prime. What's the measure of A prime, B prime, C prime? So remember dilations do not change angle size. So since it started as a right angle, it's going to stay as a right angle that has a measure of 90 degrees. Number seven, dilate point C using center D and a scale factor of three-fourths. So when you're doing this, you need to have a ruler so that you can measure um, how far the point is from the center. So I'm going to get my ruler here, and then we'll be able to measure how far... Um, point C is from D, and this will be different on your paper because um, my screen is not keeping the same size, so make sure you actually measure your length on your paper. Um, so on mine, um, the length from D to C is about 3.8 centimeters. So then when I figure out where the um, dilated point C will be, I need to multiply by the scale factor. So we're going to do 3.8 times the scale factor of 3 fourths to figure out where the new point is going to be. And so 3.8 times 3 fourths is 2.85. So then our new point C is going to be at about 2.85. So this would be where our new um, C prime point is. Next, it wants us to dilate segment AB using D as the center again. And so this time we're doing the whole segment. And so we're going to dilate each of the points. And um, so from D to A looks like it's about 1.2 centimeters. And D to B looks like it's about 3.6 now remember, again, measure on yours because they're not going to be the same as my numbers. And this time we're doing by a scale factor of one half. So I'm going to multiply these by 0.5 to get my new point. Um, so point A prime is going to be at um, 0.6 centimeters. So about right here. So this is where A prime is going to be. And then B prime, we're going to take 3.6 and multiply that by a half. And so that's going to be at about 1.8 centimeters. So not only does the um, do the points move closer to D um, from that dilation, but the segment also gets half the length of the original. <clears throat> 
Number eight, a polygon has a perimeter of 12 and it's dilated by a scale factor of K and the resulting image has a perimeter of eight. So what's the scale factor? So remember for scale factor, you do new measurement divided by original. So our new perimeter is eight. Our original perimeter was 12. And then we can simplify those by dividing by four. So eight divided by four is two. 12 divided by four is three, and we get a scale factor of two thirds. Number nine, select all statements that must be true. So parallelograms have to have four congruent sides. That is false. We could draw a parallelogram that does not have four congruent sides. Both sets of opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel and congruent. That's true. So top and bottom are going to be parallel and congruent to each other. Left and right are as well. This is definitely true. A trapezoid has to be a parallelogram. That is false. So here's a drawing of a trapezoid that is clearly not a parallelogram. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. That is true. That happens for every parallelogram. And the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent. That does not have to be true. Um, it is true in a, in a rectangle, but it does not have to be true in a parallelogram. So this one is shorter than that one. So that is not true in all cases.